Good morning, I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church, and this is Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. We come to day 294, which brings us to Joshua chapter 2. Let's pray and seek the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, which is perfect, just as you are perfect. Your breathed out word is powerful and sufficient as it shows us you, your character, your will for us. It shows us ourselves. It shows us our Savior. We pray that you would speak your word to our hearts today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Joshua chapter 2. And Joshua the son of Nun sent two men secretly from Shittim as spies, saying, Go, view the land, especially Jericho. And they went and came into the house of a prostitute, whose name was Rahab, and lodged there. And it was told to the king of Jericho, Behold, men of Israel have come here tonight to search out the land. Then the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the land. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. And she said, True, the men came to me, but... I did not know where they were from, and when the gate was about to be closed at dark, the men went out. I do not know where the men went. Pursue them quickly, for you will overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof and hid them with the stalks of flax that she had laid in order on the roof. So the men pursued after them on the way to the Jordan as far as the fords, and the gate was shut as soon as the pursuers had gone out. Before the men lay down, she came up to them on the roof and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, and that the fear of you has fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land melt away before you, for we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon and Og, whom you devoted to destruction. And as soon as we heard it, our hearts melted, and there was no spirit left in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God, in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord, that as I have dealt kindly with you, you also will deal, will deal kindly with my father's house, and will give me a sure sign that you will save alive my father and mother, my mother and brothers, my, sorry, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and deliver our lives from death. And the men said to her, Our lives for yours, even to death. If you do not tell this business of ours, then when the Lord gives us the land, we will deal kindly and faithfully with you. Then she let them down by a rope through the window, for her house was built into the city wall, so that she lived in the wall. And she said to them, Go into the hills, or the pursuers will encounter you, and hide there three days until the pursuers have returned. Then afterward you may go your way. The men said to her, We will be guiltless with respect to this oath of yours that you have made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, you shall tie this scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down, and you shall gather into your house, your father and mother, your brothers and sisters, and your father's household. Then if anyone goes out of the doors of your house into the street, his blood shall be on his own head, and we shall be guiltless. But if a hand is laid on anyone who is with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head. But if you tell this business of ours, then we shall be guiltless with respect to your oath that you have made us swear. And she said, according to your words, so be it. Then she sent them away, and they departed. And she tied the scarlet cord in the window. They departed and went into the hills and remained there three days until the pursuers returned. And the pursuers searched all along the way and found nothing. Then the two men returned. They came down from the hills and passed over and came to Joshua the son of Nun, and they told him all that had happened to them. And they said to Joshua, Truly the Lord 
has given all the land into our hands, and also all the inhabitants of the land melt away because of us. That is Joshua chapter 2 in God's word. So Joshua had once been a spy. He and Caleb had been the two faithful spies among the twelve who were sent out to spy out the promised land some 40 years prior. Now, he has reason to send spies again. They're coming into the promised land from a different way. They were going to come up from the south, but now they're coming in from the east. So he has reason to spy out the land again. Which is the best way to go? How should we approach things? What's the topography? What are the defenses like? What do the locals say? All this information that's important to gather is reconnaissance, basically, is what these two men are. Now, when the Twelve spies were sent out. One was chosen from each tribe, so that there would be equal representation of all of God's people. But ten of those were faithful spies, and only two were faithful. And I think Joshua, exercising some sanctified common sense, some wisdom earned the hard way, said, probably a better idea to just send two faithful spies rather than to try to gather a group of twelve who would represent all of the people of God. Better to have two faithful spies. They can move quickly. They can, they're less likely to be seen. They can carry out their work, and I can be more careful about who I pick to make sure that I'm picking trustworthy men. So these men go, and they go to Jericho, and they go into the house of a, a prostitute, Rahab, who lives on the city wall. Her window is, is in, to, in the city wall so that they can get straight out. It's a strategic location, um, she was a, a, a good person to go talk to, to get a feel for how uh, the men in the city would feel. I'll just leave it at that in terms of detail. But here she is, a prostitute, a woman of ill repute, a woman of immoral background. And yet she has a family that she loves and cares about. And she has heard, the, heard about the Lord and she's heard about the people of God. And she is a God fearer. She is one who fears the Lord and who believes that God is going to deliver the Canaanites into the hands of the Israelites, and she wants to identify with God's people. She wants to help them, she wants to protect them, and she wants to identify with them. Rahab is going to end up being a direct ancestor of Boaz, who was a direct ancestor of David, who was a direct ancestor of Jesus. In fact, Rahab is one of four women who, is who are mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. So a Canaanite prostitute becomes a direct ancestor of the Son of God, the greater than Joshua, the one who brings everlasting salvation to God's people. Now her behavior here has been much discussed. She lies to the men of the city and she hides the spies. Well, she's now engaging in covert warfare operations. There's, there's a war. God has charged his people to expel these Canaanites from the land, to, to get rid of them. So her actions, though she is lying and deceiving, she is, she is engaged in a righteous cause because she's engaging in covert warfare operations on behalf of God's people. And so she protects the spies she also gets them to make a pledge to her that she and her family will be safe as long as they're all in her household and to, as the sign of that, her household needs to be marked by a scarlet cord. Now there's a practical reason for a scarlet cord. It's easy to see in the heat of battle. It's distinct. It would stand out against the background of the city. But there's also symbolic significance to the scarlet cord. The houses of the people of Israel had been marked by the blood of the lamb when the Passover happened 40 plus years earlier and the angel of destruction came in and killed the firstborn of the land. They were marked for safety by red on their houses, the blood of the lamb. That was probably in the mind of the spies. Say, I remember we were marked by the blood of the lamb. Maybe they were small children at the time. We don't know speculation. We don't know how old they are. Or that they certainly have heard the story of the Passover, even if they don't have living memory of it themselves. 
So I believe that this scarlet cord ties into the Passover, which of course is a symbol for the blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who marks us out for protection. And I do believe we have another instance here of God's covenantal pattern of dealing with households together. In Joshua 2, it's the household that is protected from judgment. They come under the sign of God's covenant uh, protection. In the book of Acts and in the New Testament, we have households who are baptized. They're given the sign and the symbol of God's covenant of grace, and they're brought into the church. They're brought into the people of God, just as Rahab's household is brought into the church of the Old Testament, the assembly, the people of God. So Rahab is a good example for us of faith. She's also a better example for us of the grace of God to save and transform the life of the least likely. You may feel like you're unqualified. You may feel like, who are you to be a part of the people of God? Who are you to have any special part in God's plan? But Rahab was a Canaanite prostitute. But because she had faith in God and she acted on that faith, God gave her a special place within the line of God's people. God had a purpose for her. God had chosen her out. We know even before the foundation of the world, his sovereign grace had chosen her to be a part of his people and to enter into the protection of being with God's people. Let's pray. Father, thank you for such great love. Matchless, strong, faithful, and true is your sovereign, steadfast love and we thank you for it. Father, be with us today. Help us to walk by faith. Help us to act in faith, even with courage and boldness, to do what we know is right, what would honor you, and what would bless your people. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, that's Joshua 2. Tomorrow, we're going to be in the Psalms for Psalms 44 and 45. Hope you can join me for that. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Mm -hmm.